Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions and a short review of the Velo Autofocus Extension Tube Set for Nikon mirrorless cameras. Now the set consists of two tubes, we'll just get them out of the packaging here, a 12 millimeter and a 20 millimeter extension tube. Uh, together, of course, they give you 32 millimeters. For those of you who are not familiar with extension tubes, they are just hollow tubes that fit between the camera and the lens and give you more extension and allow you to focus closer. How close you can get depends on the length of the tube as well as the focal length of the lens. Longer lenses require more extension to get very close. Shorter lenses less. And tubes can be stacked. This set, again, consists of a 12 and a 20 millimeter, but if you bought another set of them, you could stack them. Uh, when you do that, of course, when you add any extension, less light is reaching the sensor, uh, but the TTL metering on the camera will compensate for that. Uh, these tubes have contacts on both sides, both the side that mounts to the camera and the side that, mount, that the lens mounts to, to enable full autofocus. Uh, all your exposure modes will work, uh, and uh, IBIS if your camera has it. They're made in China. They are mostly plastic. However, the mount, both for the lens and the side that mounts to the camera, are metal. Okay, uh, I noticed a little bit of play, uh, just a little bit uh, between the two tubes and if when mounting the lens. Okay, but it really didn't seem to have any effect and uh, the images appeared fine. One other thing with respect to uh, that loss of light. Uh, even with a dedicated macro lens, such as Nikon's 105mm Z mount, uh, that is a 2.8 lens. However, when you get to one-to-one -one magnification, it effectively becomes a 4.5 lens. So you're losing a stop and, a third, and one third of light. Again, the camera compensates for that, the metering compensates for that, and um, the camera also will indicate the effective aperture. Same thing with the extension tubes. As you extend the lens, further from the sensor, again, you're losing light. Camera knows that, and uh, the indicated aperture on the camera will give you the actual effective aperture with the tubes. I use these tubes on my 85 millimeter 1.8 Nikon Z lens, also my 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 zoom. They work fine. Uh, you could also use them on your macro lens. For example, that 105 macro lens that goes to one-to-one -one by adding extension, you could go beyond one-to-one. -one. So if you need to get really close. One thing to keep in mind with extension tubes, they are designed for close-up photography. Okay, once you add extension to the lens, you are no longer able to focus at infinity. Okay, so, um, let me just show you how they mount real quick. All right, so I have the, 70, the 24 to 70. It's very simple. There is a lens lock release on the extension tube. So I'm gonna remove the 12 millimeter tube from the 20, just like you would remove the lens from the camera. They mount the exactly the same way. Okay, there you go, I just added 20 millimeter. If I wanna add Another 12 millimeter of extension. Just press on the lens lock release on the tube. Mount the other tube. And then mount the lens. Very simple. Okay, so let's look at some images. Uh, we're just, I wanna show you how close you can get with these tubes. Uh, so uh, the first images we're gonna look at are, we're done with the 85 millimeter 1.8. And here it is at its closest focus distance, okay? Uh, I took the hood off the lens. And the ruler is 26 inches from the front of the lens. And um, you can see here that that image is approximately 10 inches wide. 
Okay, so you can fill the frame with a subject approximately 10 inches wide at the minimum focusing distance with the 85 1.8 without extension. Okay, so next I added 12 millimeters of extension. All right, I used the, just the 12 millimeter tube. I was still at the minimum focusing distance of the lens. In fact, for all these images, I just had the lens focused at the minimum distance, okay? Uh, now, from the front of the lens to the ruler, it was 13 and a half inches. So it basically cut the distance in half, cut the close focus distance in half. And um, this covered an area four and a half inches wide, okay, with the 12 millimeter tube. I then removed the 12 millimeter extension tube and installed the 20 millimeter tube. Um, again, at the minimum focus distance, I was able to get as close as 11 inches from the ruler, and that filled the frame with an image three and a half inches wide, approximately. All right, then uh, the final step, I added the 12 millimeter extension tube to the 20 to give me a total extension of 32 millimeters. I was now eight inches to the ruler from the front of the lens, and that covered an image area two and a quarter inches wide. So you could see you could get pretty close. That is approximately um, the size, it covers an image of the size of a standard business card. One thing to keep in mind is as you get closer to your subject, of course, that gives you less room for light to reach your subject. And that's why I took the, um, the lens hood off. I didn't want to block any light. Um, and that's also an advantage of using longer lenses when doing macro photography um, because that gives you more room between your subject and your lens, especially important like a photographing insects. You, know, you don't want to get right on top of the insects, they'll, you know, they'll fly away. Uh, next thing I did, I installed the 12 millimeter tube with my 24 to 70 lens. I set the lens at 50 millimeter and focused it at its closest focus distance. Again, the lens hood was removed. Now, I was able to get to two inches from the ruler, uh, and that's just with the 12 millimeter tube. You could see that a shorter lens requires less extension to get real close. So at two inches, at 50 millimeter with the 12 millimeter tube, um, I was able to cover an image three inches wide. Okay, so uh, really if I had added any more extension to that zoom at 50 millimeters, I was going to be like right on top of the subject. You could actually see here in this image a shadow of the lens um, because I was so close, only two inches. So that doesn't give you much room uh, for lighting. So that's why it's usually better to go with a longer lens. Okay, so these tubes cost $79.95 at B&H Photo in New York City. Uh, they are also made for Canon, Sony, and Micro Four Thirds mirrorless cameras, as well as DSLRs. Uh, I highly recommend them. You know, they're not expensive. They seem to work well. Uh, Nikon doesn't make as of this video, which is May of 2022, Nikon does not make extension tubes in Z-mount. So uh, this is one, I believe there are some other uh, third-party manufacturers that do, uh, but this is one of your only choices. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And in my next video, I will be reviewing another Velo product, a grip with vertical shutter release for the original Nikon Z6, Z7, and Z5. So I will talk to you next time.